How's it going, everybody? Thanks for being here. I appreciate the chance to give a little talk today about the joy of figuring things out. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. I get a lot of enjoyment out of taking things apart, figuring out how they work, and hopefully, in some cases at least, making them better. And I think a lot of you are here because you enjoy the same kind of things. So without wasting a bunch of time, let's just jump into some of the things I have prepared. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. A lot of my favorite projects use custom PCBs, like the BH Onofre, all of the Quinn LED boards, and the HA Switchplate. Ordering from PCBWay is pretty easy, and they're always running some kind of special, so you can be pretty sure that you're getting a good deal. They deliver fast, but most importantly, it's good quality stuff. So if you've got a project that needs custom PCBs, check out PCBWay. This is a conference about smart home stuff. I have to admit that a lot of the smart home stuff I do is really not very necessary. For me, it's more of a game, like, can I make this work? It's like putting together a puzzle or solving a riddle. I'm going to tell you about the principles and tools that I use when tackling a smart home puzzle. The first principle is a willingness to figure things out. If I waited until I understood something completely before I attempted it, I would rarely, if ever, accomplish anything. Asking an expert is fine. But figuring it out by experimenting and even failing is an important part of the process. My second principle is be prepared to break it. To make the best kind of discoveries, I have to be willing to take things apart and tinker around with them and figure out how they work. That means I may break the thing in the process of figuring out how it works. So maybe it's not a great idea to tinker around with things that are really expensive or really difficult to replace. The same goes for things that are critical to safety. It's all fine and good to take apart the lamp or the vacuum or the coffee maker, but you probably shouldn't mess with the smoke detectors. Principle number three, document your disassembly. In other words, don't lose the screws. We all have pretty easy access to a digital camera these days with our phones. Take lots of pictures as you take things apart. That way you'll have a record when it comes time to put it back together. So those are my three main principles for tinkering. Have a willingness to figure things out, be prepared to break it, and document your disassembly. Now let's talk about some of the tools of a tinkerer. Number one is a basic understanding of electricity. If you don't know the difference between a volt and an amp, then you should probably not be messing around with anything electrical. Fortunately, there are plenty of good resources out there to learn the basics of electricity. In real life, I'm a doctor. And I've taken many, many classes on all kinds of topics. But my favorite textbook still is Del Mar's Standard Textbook of Electricity. I still keep my old copy of that book right here by my workstation. Electricity is based on magnetism. And magnetism is magic. That means having an understanding of electricity and being able to manipulate magnetism and electricity makes us modern day wizards. So find a good source and gain a solid foundation of electrical understanding. That's tool number one. Tool number two is a multimeter. I use my cheapo $12 multimeter pretty much every day. Continuity is probably the most important testing function. It tells you when one end of a wire or a contact point is electrically connected to another. For example, I use it to find which contacts on a circuit board are connected to the on-off switch. The next most important function on your multimeter is the AC voltage detection. Before tinkering around with the electricity in your house, use the AC detector to make sure that power to the wires you're about to work on is turned off. Sometimes there are wires from two different circuit breakers in the same junction box, so turning off just one circuit breaker doesn't guarantee that all the other wires in the junction box are dead. Before you touch anything, poke around with your AC voltage detector and make sure it's all off. The DC voltage detector is also very useful for troubleshooting. If some electronic device isn't working, I poke around looking for DC voltage. If I can't detect voltage where I think it should be, that's a pretty good clue about which component might be causing the problem. Tool number two, is a multimeter. If you don't have one, get one. 
Tinker tool number three, soldering iron. I know this intimidates a lot of people, but being able to solder or unsolder will take your electronics tinkering to the next level. My basic tips for learning how to solder are use magnification, use thin gauge soldering wire, get some helping hands to hold things in place, and finally, your soldering iron should stay still and the solder wire is what moves around. And tinker tool number four is a bench power supply. It's really handy to have an adjustable source of power nearby. Most of these bench top power supplies will go from like three volts up to 30 volts. And when you power up a device from a bench top power supply, the power supply will often also tell you how much current that device is drawing. Most multimeters will be able to give you a current reading also, but it's more convenient when it's just part of your power supply. So tool number four, benchtop power supply. So those are some of the principles and tools that I use in taking things apart. So now what are some of the specifics about making normal dumb devices into smart home devices? Now it's time for some electronics magic. What spells do electronics wizards use? Number one is the ESP microcontroller. The ESP8266 has been the main microcontroller in just about every smart home device for at least the past five years. It's cheap, it has Wi-Fi, and there are plenty of ways to program it. The ESP32 is the newer, more powerful version. If you want to DIY some smart home devices, you absolutely must become familiar with the ESP microcontrollers. DIY smart home spell number two, firmware. The firmware is what you use to control the microcontroller. There are lots and lots of DIY firmware options available. Tasmoda is my number one recommendation. It's got a simple user interface, lots of documentation, lots of development still going on, and lots of users out there that can help. At this point, there's pretty much nothing that Tasmoda can't do. You wanna DIY your smart home? Get an ESP controller and Tasmoda, and you'll be unstoppable. The firmware is how you interact with the ESP controller. But in order for the ESP controller to interact with the rest of the world, it needs a few more things. First is GPIO pins. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. GPIO pins can sense or send low voltage signals. The ESP8266 has 11 available GPIO pins and the ESP32 has 36. So what are you gonna to connect to those GPIO pins? Well, for one, you can connect a relay. A relay is just an electronically controlled switch, but it's the secret weapon to make any dumb device smart. The simplest, most effective DIY smart home magic is to just replace the mechanical on-off switch in a device with a relay. It's pretty simple to do, and it'll make you look like a genius. What else attaches to the GPIO pins? Buttons and switches. As far as Tasmoda is concerned, a button or a switch is any input device that sends a simple on off, yes, no, one zero type of signal. That means things like physical buttons, end stop switches, motion detectors, or magnetic read switches, or any other part of a device where some contact point goes from having a little bit of voltage to having no voltage. That can be detected by Tasmoda and used as a button or a switch. So in summary, as you go out on your DIY smart home adventures, don't be limited by the devices that are available off the shelf. Be willing to tinker, take things apart, poke around, and figure out how they work. Understanding the basics of electricity make you a modern day wizard. Learn to use the ESP microcontrollers. With some good firmware, some relays, and some buttons, you can do just about anything. Now go out there and make something awesome. Enjoy the process. Being a DIY smart home tinkerer is all about figuring stuff out and accomplishing something that you didn't know you could do when you started. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. 
If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.